Okay, well, I'm going to kick off with some housekeeping, and we will, the housekeeping starts with a lovely video. Illuminate Community Builder by Illuminati is an online community platform that has a modular build and pricing model, making it easy to tailor to specific needs and budgets. Each module allows different functionality, such as group management, including mentoring and support networks, LinkedIn integrated profiles, or event marketing. And you can choose which combination works best for you based on your specific community needs. Unlike other options on the market, Illuminate Community Builder features a unique page builder system using a comprehensive asset library. This allows you to modify all aspects of the design and content, offering virtually unlimited flexibility, making sure the platform can grow with your evolving needs. As an administrator, you have access to a suite of tools with which you can oversee the management of your community, run reports, analyze data and gain a deeper understanding of user needs so you can optimize your community engagement. <laughs> okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you happen to be in the world. And welcome back to another Creating Connection webinar. So I'm stealing from Maria's blurb a bit here. How has networking changed over the past five years? And how can institutions and organizations encourage and leverage a networking mindset? And why? Uh, joined us, joining us today is Dr. Maria Gallo. And she's one of the world's leading experts on alumni engagement and the author of The Alumni Way. Link for that will be in the chat. Uh, after 20 years in higher education in Ireland and Canada, Maria founded The Alumni Way offering energetic workshops, masterclasses, and speaking engagements for students, alumni, and alumni career professionals to build alumni inspiration and impact. Maria, welcome to the webinar. Thank you. And thank you so much uh, for inviting me um, uh, again to, to address this great group. I'm glad to see so many people here and so many familiar faces here on the um, on the session to, in the session today. And I'm glad that this topic is so energizing for people. And I hope that um, we'll keep that going. And, you know, since Illuminati is actually one of, I know, a longtime supporter of CASE, um, I'm going to use the other CASE uh, acronym that we can use very well, which is copy and steal everything. So let's share as a community any of your great um, ideas. Um, and as we go through, there's going to be opportunities for prompts in that way. And that's how the chat can be used, um, the chat function. And then at the end, as Alistair mentioned, we'll have an opportunity for some Q&A. So we're going to try to get this going. And I hope that you're at the edge of your seat and you're ready for some action. I'm standing. So if I start moving around a lot, you'll know <laughs> why. Um, and uh, so we're going to start this off as people are putting in their chat a little bit about themselves. But I also want you um, to think of this question as a starting point. Why do we encourage our alumni or our students, depending on who you work with? So why do we encourage our alumni to network? And I want you to answer that in one word. Just put one word in the chat. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Why do we want them to network? So just throw that in the chat and we'll see what comes up. These are great words. We got connectivity, belonging, opportunities, reputation, fun. This is great <laughs> mentorship. We're getting a really good, um, and I have to say, uh, uh, a, a really, uh, it wasn't really the expected words that I was expecting. So this is even better. It's brilliant. Okay, so those are the reasons. We've got a lot of really interesting reasons on why we want our alumni um, to connect, connect or even our graduates to connect opportunities. There's lots of great, um, great words there. And if we think about now ourselves, ourselves as um, career alumni professionals, I know that there's alumni um, leadership, alumni volunteers on the call. I want you to also think, why do we as professionals or as leaders, why do we continue to network? So we've asked them, we want them to network. Why do we want, uh, why do we continue to network? So put that in one word in the chat too. So why are we networking? Why are we here today? To maybe connect with others. Why um, do we go through networking, learning? I love that. Keep going with other words. Development, learning, belonging, sharing. There's a lot of um, growth, benchmarking, development. Love that. So there's a lot of the same. So there is um, um, a bit of an opportunity for overlap. 
And I have to be honest, I thought that the main word that people were going to use um, for networking for their alumni, their graduates and their students was going to be that typical word, which was careers or their job. So I thought it was going to be a much more instrumental, um, an instrumental reason for networking. And I'm really happy to see that people are thinking about it in a much more uh, quantum and also a much more transformational way. And that's the way that we want to uh, be approaching networking today. And at its core, a networking mindset um, and this kind of next generation networking mindset does focus on this transformational thinking about networking. Because often if, you, if I ask the same question to your students, to your graduates, to your alumni, they might be saying what I thought was the original instinct, which I'm networking because I need to find a job. I need to, you know, that those instrumental reasons for going. So I'm happy to see that, you know, we're already moving into that, that, that mindset of uh, a transformational thinking about, uh, about networking. And indeed, um, we want to introduce that kind of mindset to our, to that, and to our, to our alumni, to our students, our graduates, and that to, to introduce them to that ecosystem. So um, I want to think now about how networking has changed in the last five years and really how it's accelerated since uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, and, you know, maybe my ask in the, in the chat is, you know, how do you think that networking has really changed? And, I'll, and, you know, think about, you know, ways that you have networked differently in the last couple of years or the ways that you've created networking differently for your alumni. So just add that into the chat. And if you have some really innovative ideas of things that you've done around networking, you can also just pop that in the chat too. That's great. So um, yeah, so uh, there's a wider pool of individuals. I mean, I can tell you that um, I am joining you today from very sunny Northwest of Ireland in a very rural community. Um, it's right beside a cattle mart. You won't hear cows, but you might. Um, I am in the middle of a rural community and I'm able to have this connection with all of you all around the world. And I think that's a very special thing. And even a few years ago, um, that kind of networking would not have been as possible. So think of those that, that there's that level of possibility that we also can provide to our alumni. And that's what we want to be thinking about um, today. It also, but with that, that openness also brings a lot of overwhelm. So I think that that can also be something we have to be cognizant of as we think about what's available for our alumni is that overwhelm that happened. And so what can happen is what I like to call the spaghetti on the wall approach. You know, that idea where you just, you put all that networking and then you see what sticks. And so that kind of approach where you're trying to do that networking. And sometimes that's the kind of networking that um, our students, our graduates and our alumni might be taking because they are, um, they think that that's how it's going to help them. Um, and that's because it, networking is something that as I'll explain, is a much more deeper process than we need to be thinking about. And the other thing that we can be delving in much more into the literature at some other, uh, other time, but is to think about you know, social capital. That you know, when you have social capital, a certain amount of social capital, it amasses further social capital. So what happens is those that understand and understand how to play the game, they continue to know how to play the game and can network in a strategic way. So the fact that there's more openness, they're able to, to manage it better because they understand how the game is being played for networking. So in order for you to get the most out of today's webinar, I want um, to, to, to set you a challenge. And that challenge is I'm a really big believer in writing things down. So in order to, and I'm sure that many of you are taking notes, but can I ask you, um, that you might be interested in, in this, which is a little bit of a chart. So you can see it's a, I don't know if you can see that well there, but um, my whiteboard behind me is not too much of a whiteboard I've discovered in my little room here. So I'm giving you this to work on. And that is a, we're calling it a, a two by four chart. So if you look down um, the right-hand side or the, the middle column will be your insights. So what you get is like points of insight. Um, and then there's going to be a bit of an action, so i.e. your homework. So I want you to be thinking about that. And I want you to put the word traits at the top, and we're going to be filling those little boxes there. And the four traits that I'll be talking about today will, will be filled in um, on, the, um, 
on that left hand side column. So if you want to create that, that's going to be a way for you to compactly be able to put your notes together for this webinar. And if you bear with me, I'm just going to share my screen because I am a visual learner and I just love having a little bit of slides to help prompt some of our presentation today. Let's make sure that this works on me. Yeah. Well, I can definitely see it, so I can confirm that okay. it is working. Well. That's great. Thanks, Alistair. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Perfect, brilliant, and I see Daniel now joining us, super. Um, so I want you to, to, we're gonna be starting about, you know, why we're looking at next generation networking. And, you know, I was just speaking to a few people here in um, in the, the shared space that I work in today. We're talking about networking and most people, oh, networking, and there's this, it has that kind of, you know, uncomfortable feeling. There was a lot of uncomfortable faces over lunchtime when I talked to them about, you know, networking. And um, what I want to be is I want to kind of debunk a lot of those myths and how we're going to debunk those for our, our alumni, our students, and our graduates. And the reason for doing that is these four reasons. One, because of the inclusive nature that, that networking can have and being open to networking, but the inclusivity in, in so many ways that networking is something for everyone. It's something that can happen at any time, anywhere. So that idea of the intentionality, so the intention in our networking, the opportunity for it to be transformational. And I was just really heartwarmed to see those, uh, those words that came up, connectivity uh, and belonging and all those words that, um, that came up around networking as opposed to those instrumental ones. Um, so there is the opportunity to then leverage that thinking to think about how how do we ensure that our students, our alumni, our graduates think about networking as a way for the, as, as a conduit to getting a meaningful life, a life with purpose, and a life as an active global citizen. And, um, and as we know, uh, you know, the higher education experience, it's in and of itself is actually transformational. So, um, you know, their networking should actually mirror that. And finally, is that idea of creating an impact. So this isn't all about them. Um, but networking is indeed something where you can actually have an impact on the whole world. So it's about how you can create a lifelong habit and how to help others to spark, po spark positive change um, in, in your communities, in your organizations, in your colleges and universities. Um, and then, of course, there's always that question, right? Well, you know, networking, well, um, you know, what about like our community platforms, our alumni community platforms, those <laughs> platforms like Illuminati? I, I, I hear some laughter. You know, um, but I, I will explain myself. And what about LinkedIn? You know, I network, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, there's all this kind of thing. But I want to be clear that these are essential tools to foster and build networking. Um, but what we really want to achieve and what we want to be talking about today is this idea of creating a blueprint um, the, um, to offer our students, our alumni, with strategies and skills and plans when they're thinking about networking. So, so that the overwhelm doesn't take over when they go to um, a platform, when they're on in a, an online community, when they go yeah, on to still LinkedIn. Out. She still feels bad. Um, and, and so that's, that's where we want to be going um, with, it, with this today is that we're gonna be creating, um, and that's what you, you know, that's a challenge for yourselves is to create that blueprint for networking. And the way that, of course, anybody who knows me knows that the way that we're going to be talking about this net, next generation networking mindset is through the, the, the conduit of my book, which is The Alumni Way, Building Lifelong Value from Your University Investment, um, and the four traits of savvy, informed, engaged alumni, um, and how they can become alumni leaders. Um, and those four traits are the following, reflection, curiosity, passion, and generosity. And we're going to use those as the conduits. And so when we, when we go back to our little chart, if you can see me here in the corner, and we're talking here, the traits, you can just pop those traits in the four boxes down here. So as you're filling in the rest of your template, um, hopefully things will come up and be prompts and you'll have a lot of homework at the end. So that's okay. And, you know, in the insight box, if I could say that's the, the what we could call the case box if you want to. And what I mean by that, again, is that, you know, if you copy and steal anything, so uh, steal everything. So if there is things here and you're thinking that is a brilliant idea, 
um, or I have something I've done that's pretty brilliant around networking, share it with the group because that's the idea of creating connection that we're here today to do. So we're going to start with reflection, reflection being uh, this box here. So we're going to be doing R, so R for reflection. We're going to be starting there, okay? So we're going across here. So one of the things that I really want to be um, emphasizing is, of course, networking is not something that you do just when you need it. It's not something where we want to emphasize to our students and our graduates. This isn't something that you do um, when you start looking for a job. This is something that is a constant process um, and it's a lifelong habit. And so we want them to ensure that they're thinking about starting this process early. And one of the ways is through creating an alum from day one community, alum from day one strategy within your organization. And that allows to create a more inclusive social capital. So we want to make sure that our students and our um, maybe most recent graduates um, and our alumni understand that they are part of this community and they're part of that alumni community from the, the moment that they start. And, and so, you know, that can actually happen by diffusing this idea of an alum from day one strategy across not just what's happening in alumni, but in fact, across the whole institution. So that's a huge challenge for some of you that are in alumni um, offices, but, you know, how do we make sure that everyone sees that the students that we have on campus, those that have just started in the last few weeks in some places in the world, that those people are already alumni. So that, that's, that's some, you know, one cha challenge that we need to think. And if anyone has any good suggestions of stuff that they have done around alum from day one, pop it in the chat. It'd be great to see it. Um, and then your action piece um, is really to think, well, we want to try to create um, low stakes opportunities for um, networking for our students and for our recent graduates. And what I mean by low stakes is that Alumni and um, a lot of um, students and some of the research would suggest that some of our, um, our students are more risk averse than they ever have been before. Um, and so the idea of going out and meeting people and then perhaps, you know, you know doing a faux pas, doing something that maybe doesn't, uh, you know, seem correct or just feels a bit um, uncomfortable that we've created situations where we are actually normalizing this, we're making them feel comfortable, and that they've had an opportunity to do it in a very informal way. So, you know, having those opportunities. So that's the question that goes into your action box here. And your action box is right here, oh, the other side, is to think about, you know, how can you create low stakes networking experiences for your students and your recent graduates? So I want you to be thinking about that. And, um, I, I'm seeing some stuff that's popping up in the chat. So take a look as we're going through this. So that's 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 the first the first trait around reflection. The next one is curiosity. And for anybody that has read my book, the curiosity section is the section where we talk about careers and business. Um, and but I want to kind of delve this even deeper about thinking about a networking mindset and networking for impact. And I want to be thinking, well, how do we create um, opportunities for people to think about careers with impact, um, careers with purpose. So when people have, you know, thought about some really interesting things that they have done. Um, and um, also this idea of what um, is becoming a, a, a trendy word I'm only just recently discovered around transdisciplinary opportunities, meaning that there are ways that there can be kind of this cross pollination across different academic disciplines, um, different professional organizations, so maybe engineers talking to arts graduates, talking to architects, talking to, you know, that kind of diffusion, because sometimes um, as alumni and careers professionals, it can often be um, a siloed experience. So we want the engineers to be talking to engineers or we, you know, we um, silo things based on faculty or by um, college area, etc. And so there is um, an opportunity to look more at careers with impact when you start to create that, that diffusion across, uh, across different, um, different areas and also um, to, to be able to ask those questions around careers with impact. And I'm going to build on this transdisciplinary idea throughout this presentation, so keep, keep posted. The other one is about how do we ensure that, we're, that um, our alumni are creating relationships so that um, they are on other people's radars. Because what can often happen when people think about networking or thinking about getting a job is they say, 
it's always about who you know it's always about the that kind of club where everybody's you know included and I feel like I'm not included and so that idea of belonging becomes even more important that was mentioned early belonging 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 came up and I love that um, I love that fun came up too by the way so there's no reason why that can also not be infused, that should also be infused but belonging is so important and what we want to be doing is recognizing that uh, that networking is not about how um, um, who who you know but actually who knows you and so it's about kind of flipping that idea and allowing our, our students and alumni to understand that it's about who knows them not um, who they know because and and that's why it's important for them to be doing things like um, you know exploring different careers that interest them so they have a little bit of an idea of things that really um, interest them the people they might want to meet etc so that they can have a little bit of short snippet about themselves that's um that's compelling and interesting the other area that i really want to focus on and is delved more deeply in my book is this idea of alumni capital often we think of networking as connecting with people but I want to also emphasize the importance that we have to get with our students and we have to emphasize with our alum, alumni is they're not just connected to people, other alumni, professors, et cetera. They are connected to, yes, those flows of people, but also the flows of resources within the institution and also the flows of knowledge. So there's so much there around learning, webinars, um, uh, massive online courses, the MOOCs all of that kind of stuff that they are connected to. Um, and that might be um, areas that pique their curiosity for, uh, for their careers and for their life. So that sometimes it's that linear thinking that happens, who do I know or who can I connect with? And we need to be thinking of, in a much more quantum way and thinking about those three, those three overlapping Venn diagram circles where we're saying to them, well, what about any, anything that's happening here on campus? What about any, um, and what I mean by resources, it could be everything from um, your sports center to your, th you know, your arts galleries, to your theaters, to all of these different programs, departments, et cetera, that happen on your campus and how they can actually connect with those things and using their, their capital, which is their student or their alumni positioning um, as, a, as a ticket to kind of connect with these, these areas of their alumni capital. Um, and also creating that mutual benefit. So how do we kind of ensure, and this is your homework, this is your action piece just there in the second box under, um, I should actually put this here. So we have, um, so we have R is for reflection and we have C for curiosity. And now we're in this box here. And I want you to be thinking about this question. How do you build a networking culture that fo focuses on mutual value? And what I mean by that is sometimes when we create networking events, especially for maybe students or for um, our recent graduates, it tends to be one way focused. They are looking for um, career support. Uh, they're looking for uh, a job. They're looking for, you know, connections, building their networks, et cetera. But there's also the idea of how can we sell it to the other partners that are involved. So those, the other more seasoned alumni, other alumni, students, et cetera. Um, and how can we um, to make sure that we're focusing on that mutual value so that they're also getting something out of it. And, and maybe that needs to be articulated in, um, in the proposition that goes to them, the promotions, the marketing that goes to them. The next is passion. So passion, I'm just gonna put this on my little chart here. We're getting very, P is for passion. And that's where we are, whoops, that's where we are now. And I wanna be thinking um, and talking about um, the intentionality, um, the intention of, of um, a value-based networking um, uh, proposition and thinking about diversity in our network. And this goes back to the transdisciplinary, uh, uh, time transdisciplinary group again. Um, sometimes networking, um, especially if we have things where we have little, little cohorts and little clusters of people, it can easily that we create um, clusters of homophily, meaning, you know, that birds of a feather flock together, that we end up, you know, it can often ha happen even with international students, you have groups of international students, and they flock together because it's comfortable, it's easy, you have groups of, of engineers, and they flock together, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I just got something caught in my throat. 
So we want to be able to challenge our alumni to think uh, beyond just uh, just those um, those groups and to think and you know burst out of those and think um, think more transdisciplinary to think and so we have to kind of create those conditions um, and I'll be talking about that in a second and that also comes with um, the challenges of um, embedding a habit so um, I as many of you already know. I really drum in this idea of an alumni Friday. So whether that's once a month, once a week, how can you, you know, um, challenge your alumni to take an hour, take uh, an hour a week, an hour a month to actually do some intentional networking, networking, follow up, introductions they might make to others or to respond to introductions. And if they do that once a week on a Friday, which tends to be quieter for most places, that it might be something that can help to build and build and build their network. And, um, and, and this goes back to the idea too of that purposeful values-based networking that can happen. So sometimes we're very, it can be very instrumental. Um, networking tends to be around professional areas, but this is an opportunity for us to think next generation and think about, well, what other things really are we really passionate about? What other things are, um, are, are a part of our lives that actually can help to build our network. So if somebody is really passionate about um, golfing, somebody's very passionate about um, the theater and, and you know, uh, acting as a volunteer actor in a play, for example, that these are ways where they can actually meet and build their network based on some common interests. But equally, the universities, our institutions, in so many ways, whether you're in a, um, a college, a university, or even if you're in an organization, a corporate, et cetera, our universities are also faced with um, looking at a lot of bigger challenges in the world. Um, I, I use the, the, two, the two logos there in the middle of, of the impact rankings, and there's a new one that was just launched yesterday for those that haven't had the chance to see if their universities are on the list. Um, and I bring those up because they are connected to the Sustainable Development Goals, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, um, and all of these areas that um, link to everything from quality education to equity and diversity to partnership to climate change, all of these areas and sustainability, um, a lot of values that our institutions share and that have um, that have been conveyed within our value system. and. Um, our alumni often share those values. So how can we ensure that we're creating opportunities that they can network that are around these shared values? Um, and if you aren't aware of whether or not your, um, your university is on these, any of these rankings, you can take a look at um, the Times Higher Ed or the QS World Rankings and take a quick look to see if they're there. If you aren't familiar with your own institution's values, like core values of your institution, Take a look at your strategic plan. You can add that into your little um, P box there, your little action box just there. You can just add that in because that's something to, even just as a refresher or reminder, maybe putting up a post-it note somewhere to remind yourself because there are opportunities that um, those values are also something that likely resonate with your alumni and student population. Might be the reason they were attracted to your institution in the first place. Um, there, you know, there's also ways of, you know, um, and so, you know, it goes back to, that's why I have there in the top corner around your ambitions. So when I'm talking about our ambitions, I'm talking about our institutions. So how can we ensure that we're creating programming and policies that are for our alumni, for our students to create networking opportunities that encourage this diversity and encourage passion driven networking. So that's the question I want you to think about and to pause and reflect about in your action section um, uh, today. And if you can just, I'll give you a, like a, just a quick example. I mean, if you're, you're a, 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 a university, for example, that a lot of your um, students would have always spent a lot of time outdoors. It's very outdoorsy. It's a very place that um, it has that connection to uh, you know, to uh, being outside, hiking, uh, biking, etc. How can you create a net walking event, for example, 
uh, where, you know, people are doing something outdoorsy and actually also getting an opportunity for, for networking. That really kind of, you know, screens the values of your institution while allowing people to network, for example. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, and, um, and that's, and so, yeah, sorry, that's, and, and so that's where we're, we're on that one. Finally is generosity. And the reason I bring up generosity is because sometimes networking is seen as something like, well, I'm doing this and I'm actively involved in networking because right now I'm looking for something or I need something. So what we want to be able to, um, to ensure is like a fundamental principle of why we want our students and alumni to network is because it's a it's part of a greater ecosystem. They are there to not just take, but also to give. So I just put there a ratio and it's five to one. Anybody wanna guess in the chat why I put that ratio up there? Just give me a, uh, an idea of what, what's five to one, do you figure? Anybody wanna take a guess? Come on, there's gotta be somebody who has some ideas. Input, output, I like that. Five takes to one giver. Yeah. So that's that's what we're talking about there. Yeah, is the input to output. So, you know, for as for every time that we might be looking for something in our network or uh, that we want to be telling our students that they would be looking for something in their network or our alumni would be looking for something in network, there should be five times as much that they want to give back and give and give and give. I had this brilliant experience yesterday where I met with, um, for the first time, I met a student um, that I'm mentoring, um, a third year student. And um, I mentioned that to him. I did say, um, you know, do you ever ask that question um, in your, you know, I was talking, he was talking about broadening his network. I said, have you ever asked the question, how can I help you? And he said, what could I possibly do? And I said, oh, so many things, so many ways that you, you know, if you don't ask the question, then you don't know if there's going to be an answer. And the answer might not be today, and it might not be with that person. But, you know, having that intention of wanting to give back to your network is a, at least a, such an important um, component. Um, and I recently had an experience, a brilliant experience, where um, I got to meet an alum, and I did that same thing, you know, how can I um, I was, uh, it was somebody that was, um, I saw as someone who was pretty inspirational and a, a mentor and it was, how can I help? And the way, one way I could help was I could help um, that particular alum to be able to get some connections um, to, uh, to enable their son to look at and explore going into the same university that we shared and needed some, some more guidance and who to connect with in order to help um, help his son get into um, into postgraduate study at this at, at our same university and it was a small thing um, but it was really powerful for him even though that there is that kind of power dynamic that can sometimes happen in a mentorship situation and indeed it can happen in a networking situation too so you know having those questions and and ensuring that our alumni understand that it's about that generosity um, it keeps our ecosystem in check Finally, what I really want to kind of emphasize, and I've already mentioned the sustainable development goals, and there they are there for those that maybe are not as familiar with, with all of them, is there's an opportunity for that transdisciplinary listenarity to happen, so that kind of, that, kind of um, that richness of synergies, because people have a shared passion around some of these areas. So the generosity then comes from, well, we're all very interested in quality education, um, we come from different disciplines. We all might be alumni of whatever university, but we all want to look at and have a passion about, you know, creating better outcomes um, around education. And um, so they, there's an opportunity to create networking and networks around these areas. And I believe there's a, a huge opportunity for us to be thinking and, you know, um, using uh, these SDGs as a foundational thinking for how we can maybe look at affinity groups um, and other types of, of, of um, programming that happens within our institutions. Um, because people are attracted to these areas and they're passionate about some of these areas, and that would be something that could, um, could, really, uh, could be, really resonate with groups of alumni. And that allows for that is in, interdisciplinary thinking. And so the, the last challenge question that I have for you is around impact and around early and often 
And so that's in the bottom right hand corner. We've really gone through a whirlwind during this, um, this hour is how do we create meaningful ways for our students, our recent graduates and our alumni to give back and to find or to be relatable role models. And I think that's in a really important one. So, you know, we want to create these, um, these ecosystems of impact, then we have to be thinking about our alumni um, and that connection to be able to find these relatable role models so that they are inspired, um, that the next generation is inspired because they might be the role models themselves for prospective students or for current students. So it's about creating that really rich ecosystem um, around networking um, and around um, role modeling and around some of these really um, important areas of impact that might mobilize people um, to, to their passions. So just, as, just to sum up here, I have a slide there with all the key questions that go into our final category just here. I feel like I'm a bit um, like a, a showcase uh, person here, but in that action, these are the four questions. One around um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the section around uh, reflection, um, the low stakes networking experience, how can we create those? Around curiosity, where the little black dot is, is to think about um, how we can build a networking culture. In the passion section is about how we can create uh, programs and policies that encourage passion driven networking and diversity and you know what's important here is like how do we live our values um, um, you know in our networking programmings and policies that we have within our our um, our alumni and our careers uh, programming and finally around generosity it's that idea of how do we create meaningful ways for students and recent graduates to give back and to be relatable role models so that's the idea of generosity that we want to create that five to one so what if you're an alum? What does this like this mindset look like? This um, this framework that I'm presenting, and so this next generation networking framework for alumni um, follows the same path. It follows reflection, curiosity, passion, and generosity. But I, I I've taken that acronym of the alumni way, and I've taken W A Y, and then a big massive ex exclamation mark. And I've created a, that framework along the same line. So this idea of W, welcoming your alumni identity. So it has to be part of who you are. A, access, this idea of you know, this, you know, building those strategies and the curiosity around um, accessing that alumni network. Saying yes, this idea that we have to be kind of creating um, a purposeful alumni network. And that's you know, around the whole person, the holistic person that we are. And then finally around impact, that it's not just about us, but it's about how we're going to, um, to impart our networking to the world and how we're going to be um, imparting all of our, um, uh, our, our, our passions and our impact onto um, the greater community, whether that's the university community by volunteering back or into the wider community. And that's all linked again to the, the four traits of the alumni way. So just to, just to finish off there, um, here are some of uh, some resources that are, are out there. There's of course my book that there's just a little code there that you can um, look at if you're interested in um, purchasing the book. Um, there is a free um, download of a workbook with all of the activities in the book. So the book is chock full of activities um, that, uh, that help people navigate around these ideas of you know, next generation networking and thinking about you know, taking a journey of the alumni way. And then there's a whole opportunity of looking at workshops. Um, I'm developing an impact alumni program and so, so much more um, to be able to bring that energizing feeling around next generation networking to your alumni. So the last question I leave with you is this, are you ready to unleash next generation networking to your alumni and to your uh, community? I hope it's yes. And I wanna just thank you for, um, for taking the time to be having an interest in this. And I'm open to your questions. We have about uh, 15 or 20 minutes and it's an opportunity to really ignite our alumni potential within our institutions, for our institutions and for our alumni. So thank you. And there's lots there that um, you can connect with. So thanks very much.
Thank you very much, Maria. Does anybody have any questions for Maria? Please feel free to unmute yourselves and get involved. Yes. Great. These so many familiar faces, nice to see, and some people that are actually out there. So please, um, any questions, do let me. Thank you to the, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, I know you have to go. See you later. Yeah, thanks so much for the useful. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you thanks. all very briefly. So, That's care. great. Thanks for coming. Um, I can start. I'll start the ball rolling. I'll, 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 sorry, my words. Uh, I will start the ball rolling with a question. There we go. Thanks, um, Alistair. Thank <laughs> you. Got, got that out. Um, why is the impact and sustainability aspect of networking so important? Well, um, I believe, you know, there are two reasons why I think it's important. One, because of the imperative of the world that we live in today, um, and that um, networking isn't just about ourselves anymore, that we have to be thinking about how we connect to our, our, our communities. And, uh, and, you know, that seems like a practical, but the other one, which only when I spoke to another student I mentored, who's now an alum that I mentored, who has got her first job and lives in Scandinavia, which is super amazing for her. She said to me that when she had her interviews, questions around sustainability and around the, uh, the sustainable development goals came up in her interview and it came up in her application. And these are things that um, when you have a little bit of time to have insights from others because you've networked around these circles, around um, talking about um, some of those areas of sustainable development goals, you can speak very confidently. She said she felt like she had to go out and research more about them. Um, and she had the opportunity, of course, to read my book. So there was a little bit of information she had in advance. But that's the reason why is because it's an opportunity um, to really um, connect with um, what companies are looking for today, what corporates, what our, our institutions are saying. And so we need to ensure that we're equipping our students um, and our alumni with thinking in this mindset, because these are the people that will be the leaders of hopefully um, contributing to a lot of these sustainable um, questions in the SDGs. So I think that's why it's important. Thanks for the question. <laughs> uh, Mathias, your your digital hand is up. No, you're not. You do you do you not have an emoji? Where's your emojis? I was looking for your emoji. I, I I can wave, but uh, uh, for the raised hand, the raised hand thing is I don't know. I find it a little bit underwhelming. I don't know. You can you can assess you can assess it. I can't even find it. Bloody hell! Where is it? It's so boring. That uh, here we go. Does that really make a difference? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, okay, what's so your question, Matthias? My, my question is, and I just put it into the chat, so a lot of Alam-related work ends up being about fundraising. Okay. Uh, there's always a lot about talking about benefits to Alams and so on and so forth, and also give us your money. So do you see a tension here between developing such open networks in the way that you describe and the commercial interests that often drive and fund Alam uh, yeah. efforts? And it's, it's so interesting. I mean, boy, I could talk about this question all day. And in my book, I do talk about this idea that the reality is a lot of us, um, maybe those that aren't around the alumni circles that long, will have known that there is this coupling that often happens between alumni and development, which is the fundraising arm. And what, what I'm trying to kind of argue is that we need to decouple it. And it's been happening more and more, which is really exciting. And what I guess the secret is for a lot of those that work in the alumni relations space, oh yeah, good, great, great emoji. Um, for a lot of the people that work in the alumni space, um, a lot of them are very passionate about relationship building and about those uh, those interactions. So are fundraisers. So don't get me wrong. And it's a really important component of the work that is being done at the university. Advancement is supremely important. Um, but they don't they don't have to always be so interlinked. So this opportunity to decouple, which is part of the reason why I think it's so important that alumni be diffused across the whole the whole institution that everyone sees that they have a place to connect with alumni, whether they're academics or whether they're involved in student services or whatever their work is at the university, they should be thinking about their alumni and getting them involved so that we can start to decouple that because it does mean that people are less engaged. They're less likely to read stuff. They're less likely to get involved because sometimes they think, oh, I'm gonna be asked for money. And what I talk about in my book is just because somebody asks, it doesn't mean you have to say yes, but you might want to. So read about it and you know make yourself informed. Um, but I think what's really important is to say um, that we as alumni professionals or those that are advancement professionals is um, to make that case on why it's so important that they be connected 
and that they can get something really um, valuable. At it. The second just quick point about this is that a lot of alumni offices, there's a new trend to actually move it into with careers and career services as opposed to in development. And that's um, a really exciting development to see how that's progressing because then it can, tends to be much more progressed with being much more alumni centered. Um, and, um, and of course, you know, we can, you can have a cynical side of this and we can have a whole debate about that um, at another stage, but it means that there is an opportunity to be thinking about the alumni at the center of um, center of the institution, to be honest, but also the center of how we can help them as opposed to how they can help us. I hope that kind of helps, but there's a whole section in my book where I talk about philanthropy, so you can take a look. Um, Karine, hello Karine, how are you? Nice to see Hi you. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Oh, um, what I, <clears throat> I don't have so much of a, a question, but more of a comment. Uh, I'm from the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, and I'm based in Uppsala. Uh, and perhaps that you can see in my logo here, my university, we kind of think that we are the, the university, at least in Sweden, that works with the best with the SDGs. We are the University for Sustainable Life. So I was just going to... Uh, just something that we do in terms of uh, uh, showing and, you know, just lifting up all the work with the SDGs is that I am a project leader for something that we call Thesis Day. Uh, and it's a celebration day for the students' actual research projects. And they can also uh, turn in their um, proposition for, uh, for one award that we call GSA. And how does your uh, how does your project save the world? So they can then choose one of the uh, SDGs, and so to you know to connect to one of the goals. Then this is how my project uh, would <laughs> save the world. I mean, at least in, maybe in a small scale. And yeah. we, I mean, we offer um, agronomist programs, veterinarians, and uh, uh, landscape architects, and you know there are so many fantastic ideas. So. Well, maybe if someone would like to take that idea up in terms of the SDG yeah. goals, you know, just yeah. go ahead. And imagine that interconnectivity there too, where you could even mm -hmm. bring, you know, alumni can learn about the thesis, you know, projects and, you know, how they might be able to connect with them and how they might have interests, like shared interests around. And imagine you had a, a directory, I don't know if this exists, of of you know who already did these thesis projects on different SDGs, so SDG four or three or whatever, and that people can start to you know see how searchable they are, and that might pique the interest on saying, well, we have a lot of critical mass around climate change. Let's say, for example, maybe we can create something around that. Um, you know, some um, you know some speakers from the university, speakers from alumni, to actually create um, some really interesting um, you know and students from these student projects and I mean how amazing those kind of synergies that can happen and the SDGs can really open those conversations thanks Karim I see you right and if you have any connections there you can throw them in the chat um, any of those types of um, any other um, of those types of uh, initiatives Tom I see hello Tom hello uh, hopefully this works I'm um, sitting in my car here listening um, right. and, you know, Hi, uh, Tom. Maria, Hi, how are uh, you? Good, how are you doing? Good, it's twice good. in one week. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you UBC can hear me well. In, enough, in, but... um, in Vancouver, University of British Columbia. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, so my question, I guess, or, or comment is, uh, you're talking to us who are, in a way, the converted, giving us ammunition to work with uh, our alumni. Uh, you've had an experience where you've come to one of my networking events, et cetera, but I'm curious in terms of more opportunities like that, bringing you into spaces to talk to the alumni about how to network, how to, you know, the work that you're doing in terms of the alumni way and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. cause I'd love to have you come back and, and be a part of a networking session with, with alum, just to hear your message about the importance of networking as I put into the chat for yourself, for those in your circle of influence, and then collectively together for the betterment of the world uh, stuff. But I think that the need is to speak to the, to, uh, to the unconverted uh, more so than the converted. Yeah, and I, I think, and maybe I'm you know reading too much into this, Tom, but it can also be the converted, the unconverted that are in the institution along with the unconverted that are part of your alumni or student group, because it can be both too, because you have to try to also be convincing some of the powers that be 
um, on why this is important, why we need to be thinking about um, uh, strategic, purposeful, intentional networking, why our students and alumni need it, why alumni should be diffused across the institution. Our, our, um, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's stuff I love to do. I love to, um, uh, to, to talk to, um, to alumni um, and to strategic um, leadership within institutions, but equally also to speak to both students and alumni. I love that. This was totally not a plug, by the way. So, um, so thanks, Tom. But, um, but I, yeah, I'm also open to be, you know, describing, I have a next generation networking the alumni way workshop. Um, and so uh, it is something where I go through those four stages of, you know, W-A-Y and exclamation mark. So people can kind of think about a framework on how and why they go onto LinkedIn and find people. What do they do with those people? It's great that you have LinkedIn or that you've gone on to your platform, the community um, uh, online pl platform that you have, the alumni community, it's been made available to you and you don't know what to do with it. Well, this is what I can kind of um, you know help, but I hope that some of these tips today might help for you to be thinking about ways that you can bring it in yourself, but you can also bring me in and I'm happy to, to talk about um, how we can, um, it's like curating um, uh, what happens so that people can kind of have those skills and the blueprint on how they can go about doing that. And I'm happy to, to help navigate some of that process and create that journey. That's the reason I wrote the book. I really wrote the book because I was um, somebody that while I was second generation going to university, my father was first generation going to university. And to me, I didn't feel that I knew about all of this and the networking and the connections. Um, because it wasn't something that he really knew very much about either. And um, so, you know, once I discovered it and I uncovered it, I felt like I wanted everybody in the world to know. Um, and so that's, that's, you know, part of my mission is to really get out these, um, these ideas of how um, we all have a powerful network when we're connected to our institutions and how we can kind of get that out to the world. So, yeah, that's great. And you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Thanks for putting up all those links. Um, is there any other questions or I see some people I see hi um, some familiar faces and smiling faces I see we have a couple minutes left Maria just wanted to say quickly thank you so much for uh, joining us today really good to see you again um, uh, Daniel, supporting great our creating connection event I, I, I do have a, a quick one I know we've only got a couple minutes I don't want to keep people but on that five to one which I answered um, yeah uh, about that ratio uh, re you know, really interesting and I think I from my understanding that was kind of like a the pay it forward ratio so like receive something and help one person so get help once but then go and help five more people and right yeah. that obviously spreads yeah. wonderful things in the world um i was thinking about on a slightly different level is another ratio that's really important in networks and and talking about culture which is the ratio of people who are there to um to give something versus the people who are there to receive something and one of the things that we've um often seen is actually is against the intuition of most people just want to take, 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 and very few people want to give. Um, certainly in some of our, our British uh, communities, and maybe it's a very cultural yeah. thing, I know you've got this great international awareness. Um, the ratio of people wanting to give yeah. versus take is often the opposite. And actually there's yes. loads of people there who, who say, I'm here for the community, just, just ask me what you need. And there's not enough people actually asking for help. Yeah. How do we build, and in 30 seconds, how can we help people um, build a culture of asking? And actually giving them that um, awareness of, of what to take yeah. um, from I, that community. Daniel, brilliant question. It's so true. I know that is for so many universities. I think this is where the alum from day one comes back. How are we as alumni or advancement professionals connecting with our students from the moment they enter so that we're educating them on what is out there for them and how we can kind of break down some of those barriers um, to maybe connecting with people, having some alumni that are featured that look like them that are relatable role models that aren't scary. Maybe people who've only graduated the last two or three years. We don't need, do you know who spoke at my, um, my orientation? Margaret Atwood. Well, that's lovely that she spoke about, but you know, I didn't think I was gonna ever aspire like to be a best-selling author. I think we needed to think about, you know, some other people that I could really kind of connect with, you know, at being an 18 year old. And I think that will help to make people think, oh, this is something where I can actually, you know, feel like I can get some benefit out of this. So I think that's one way to start. Thank you, Barry. We come to the end. Yeah, I can't but... believe it. You know, if people have more questions, you can continue your questions. You know, find me on LinkedIn. You know, send me on some questions. If you have questions, you can, you know, throw them in the chat and I can, you know, try to address them later on too. So thank you.
Thanks so much. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Yes, and thank you, Maria, uh, for your wonderful presentation, as always.